we are about trust, probate, real estate, and more. And I started the show six months ago when uh, we were in the heat of the moment when it came to coronavirus, and now we're seeing the other side of things, which I'm really super excited. I go out and see people out and eating and having fun and enjoying their lives. But, um, you know, I always deal with uh, issues that come with families uh, having issues with their inheritance and inherited properties and uh, needing help. And, and it, you know, I used to get phone calls all the time and people asking me, who do I talk to? Where do I start? What do I do? I, um, I, I don't know what to do. I'm getting letters. And, and it really bothered me because I found that um, there was not one answer, right? You need a lot of professionals to help in these situations. And that's why I invited uh, Mr. Richard Weissman. Uh, Mr. Weissman is an attorney. He's also a fiduciary, a trustee, a referee. He is quite experienced, to say the least, and then some. And I wanted uh, him to share with you uh, things that are available to people with businesses or individuals who are facing a loss of a person in one way or another, um, and there are assets, right? W what do you do? W where do you go? How do you handle this? You may not be in this country. You may be out of state. You may be close by. There are other people involved. So um, I want to thank you, Richard, for being here with me today. It was really, it's really special because all your knowledge is just, every time I sit and talk to you, I become a better person because I learn so much, you know, and that's really important to me. And um, I want to tell everyone, what is a fiduciary? You know, people, I think, have, because fiduciary can mean many different things, and depending on whether it's a bank or a person or properties, what is a fiduciary? Well, basically, the fundamental issue with, with fiduciaries is you have a duty of loyalty to the person that you're serving. That could be a conservatorship, so it's an elderly person or someone with developmental uh, disabilities, uh, mentally ill, uh, someone who cannot care for themselves, uh, and uh, you're either taking care of them on a personal level or you're taking care of their assets or you're taking care of both, but uh, the, they have an independence, but you have a, an absolute duty of loyalty to them in everything that you do every day. And when, when will someone need a fiduciary, potentially? Uh, well... A third-party fiduciary, we should say. Uh, we're, we're sort of the last resort if they're, uh, because you want family members to participate as a fiduciary uh, before you get, unless it relates to the assets and the fiduciary of the estate uh, where the uh, relatives are either competing uh, for the assets or they don't know how to handle the assets. Uh, the will we'll come in on, on a first level basis to handle assets, uh, but to handle the individual person's needs, if it's a conservatorship or guardianship, um, we're third or fourth down on the list of uh, desirables. But, but that's okay because you don't want no one to be there, right? No. <laughs> that's, not, I, that's a scary if, place. If there's no one there <laughs> able, uh, no one there at all, or no one able to handle the situation, then a professional fiduciary uh, should come in and be appointed to uh, take care of the situation uh, for the conservatee. A guardianship involves a minor in California. Uh, a guardian is a conservator in other states. And, uh, and then uh, I'm a fiduciary on a whole list of other levels uh, as a receiver for the courts. I'm a court-appointed receiver, uh, partition referee, provisional director, special master, uh, that's involved in very um, highly litigated, disputed matters with a lot of money involved. So would it be a long answer to ask you what, sh what each does, conservator, probate administrator, trustee, trust administrator, receiver, partitioner? Uh, they, is there a short answer to each one of these? Uh, I'll try two sentences okay. per. Can we do like that? that? That works for me. All right, um, well, the conservator uh, basically is there to protect uh, the conservatee. It's someone that can't handle their personal well-being, uh, living at home, or they have to go to uh, a nursing residence. They can't handle their assets, uh, so we might come in and handle assets only uh, while they live in their residence. Uh, but it's for the protection of the individual 
who can't maintain their uh, personal affairs or their uh, financial affairs. That's a conservator. Right. A receiver is a court-appointed uh, fiduciary by the court in uh, contested litigation, and uh, I control assets uh, for the benefit of the court and will run businesses, will uh, operate or manage uh, multifamily buildings, commercial buildings of various sizes, strip centers to high-end commercial uh, high-rises. Uh, but it's all control, and you follow the orders of the court. You have a fiduciary duty to the court and the parties. Same with a partition referee, which is when there's a squabble over ownership and the parties want uh, to establish their interests in the property. And they do that through the court. And then if it involves real property, uh, the referee will come in and sell that property and distribute the proceeds as the court directs. Yeah, and I know um, not too long ago, and this is, I think, a big question um, that people have. There may be an elderly person, parent, or what have you, and there's a couple of children, um, adult children. And um, you have to leave an adult, uh, one of the adult child's ch child to to take care of the uh, partially incapacitated, uh, but living at home, and when I say capacitated, not completely functioning, uh, to take care of this person once the, uh, the person dies. And I know we talked about having someone who's a protector or a co-trustee, so they watch each other. And I know that it's pretty important for people because, you know, they think that, you know, oh, they, John's a great guy. Sorry, whoever's John out there. <laughs> but, you know, John, you, whoever you are, you're probably a good guy. But, you know, John got married and things change and, you know, mom passes away and, and Steve is sitting there with a liver transplant and, you know, he's a nice guy. He's mentally okay. But he needs help, and he's relying on John and his wife to keep him uh, at bay and take care of his needs. So we know that things don't always go as planned, and that's why we have people like Richard here. And so what are some of the options for people that don't really have a solid person to oversee the other person to make sure they're doing the right thing? Well, uh if we're talking about taking care of their daily living programs and monitoring uh, uh, basic assets they may have, yeah, like, like yeah. a home, uh -huh. uh, yeah. and they've Make got sure they Social Security it. income coming mm -hmm. in, they may have Medicare uh, insurance they, or Medi-Cal, um, then a conservator would be appointed to take care of them because they can't uh, adequately take care of themselves on a personal level, you know, get to the doctor's appointments in order to uh, clean the house, uh, do the things that uh, we all have to do each day. Uh, if there's someone there, uh, a, s uh, a child or a sibling, who's able to take care of their day-to-day -day needs, uh, you may not need a conservator for, uh, of the person, but you may need uh, a conservator of the, uh, uh, of the estate to take control and pay the mortgage on the house or to receive the benefits uh, and there are other designations, uh, payee representative for Social Security that wouldn't be court appointed. It, it's another methodology mm -hmm. outside of court. But I'm, I'm a court guy, so I do everything that, that gets involved with uh, uh, court petitions, court litigation. Right. And, and, you know, the biggest thing is you don't want to be reactive. You want to be proactive. So when you deal with someone that does the court thing prior to any problems happening, um, it's good to have someone uh, overseeing the situation uh, that is, you know, involved with the courts to make sure that there's no residue that comes back to haunt anyone later because everything was done properly. Well, in, in the context of conservatorships, that's all while the individual, right. or the conservatee is alive. Yes. If we, if they pass away, now we're into a probate issue. Right. Hopefully, the uh, conservator has uh, gotten the conservatee to uh, have a will prepared, and if they've got enough assets to have a trust prepared. And sometimes competency is a question, so I'm not going to go that route at and the moment. And is it hard to judge competency? Um, th that determination 
has to be made by the estate planning lawyer. Uh -huh. There are new statutes that deal with uh, independent determination of competency, mm -hmm. and they have to sign a certification for that, as I understand it. I don't do any of that, right, but right. I think that's what they have to do. Uh, but if but the conservator or uh, someone acting under a power of attorney can take uh, the individual to the uh, estate planning lawyer to do what's necessary so that post-death things are outlined, who's getting what, when they're getting it, uh, and what assets uh, are going to be involved with the immediate distribution through probate, um, and who's the administrator or, ex excuse me, who's the executor is going to be. If there's no will, then you end up with an appointed administrator. That can be a hassle with siblings or other relatives fighting to be the administrator. Um, that's when I get appointed because there's a fight as to who the administrator is going to be. Uh, executors will follow up on the requirements of, of the will. And if there's a trust involved, uh, again, the trustee can act in accordance with the terms. Uh, you mentioned protector. Uh, the, uh, if there are enough assets and you've got multiple beneficiaries, uh, there is a concept that's been developed over the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years uh, and is becoming prominent in California called a protector. And the estate planning lawyer uh, might provide for a protector who's a third party, uh, could be a family member, could be a fiduciary like myself, uh, to come in and monitor uh, all the financials of the trustee, make sure that the beneficiary is getting paid what uh, he or she is uh, uh, entitled during the course of a month or a year, uh, and to assure that the uh, management of the assets uh, is appropriate in accordance with the fiduciary relationship of that trustee. Uh, and uh, I warn you that the protector ought to have a slew of powers to investigate and get bank statements and look at financials and all of that. Uh, otherwise, they don't have the right to do that. Thought I'd throw that out there. Yes, so and it's an intricate process, but um, it's very good when you when you know you've got a really good financial person uh, who's going to handle things. Uh, but you're looking for the compassionate side of it, right. and the protectors there, both on the financial protection as well as um, making sure that the uh, beneficiary gets the requirements uh, financially of support, maintenance, education, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's super interesting. I have some ideas, which I don't even know if that's available, but we'll be back, and I want to keep everybody hanging. So we're taking a break right now. Richard and I will be back. La Rocca Inspections provides four of the most needed inspections when buying or selling real estate, and homeowners love their property reviews. Since 1994, they serve the greater Los Angeles area and its 100-plus communities. Schedule residential or commercial inspections for your comprehensive reports. Their inspections can save you money on repairs. Go to LaRoccaInspections.com and download the free guide to inspections. Call now for your free quote, 818-951-1795. Felicia Gerardo Insurance Agency specializes in your small business, homeowners, auto, umbrella, and life insurance needs. Their personalized staff is passionate to help you save money while keeping all your valuable assets covered. During these times, many people are concerned about insurance and getting the best value for their dollar. Felicia Gerardo's Insurance Agency understands this and approaches each situation uniquely. Felicia Gerardo's Insurance Agency has friendly hometown customer service reps that are ready to help you today. 661-288-2001. When it comes to buying or selling your home, there's no room for error with your money. That's why Precision Escrow is the company you need to know. When selling your home, you want to make sure you're working with a company that has your best interest and keeps your money safe. That's why they use encrypted emails and secure trust accounting. Precision Escrow will follow the contract in detail from the beginning to the end and protect the parties involved. Working with Precision is like working with a huge family. Everyone is always smiling and cohesively working together for you. Check out their five-star Yelp and Google reviews and see how they separate themselves from the competition. Whether you use an agent or sell your home yourself, they'll give you 30% off your transaction, which saves you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Use code RADIO30 to take advantage of the savings. Call Lauren Fredette, your representative, for more details. She's available seven days a week during and after office hours. Call toll-free 877-393-4101. Let them help you through one of the most important decisions of your life. At Substrata, they're dedicated to be your go-to general contractor. 
They are a premier builder of high-end custom homes from the ground up, major remodels and expansions, multi-unit construction, and commercial tenant improvements for both retail and office build-out. Their focus on details and personal attention have been constant from conception of the project to completion. They build stories not with pen and keyboard, but with steel and manpower. Visit Substrata.com or call 424-702-5700. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Hello and welcome back. You're listening to Listed by Mina Cooper, 98.1 FM, 1220 AM. And we're back with Richard Weissman because I am not letting him go. There is just so much to say about all this. And a very important matter, especially now when people are coming out of COVID, family law, family issues. You know what I was thinking before we get into it? I was like, wouldn't it be great you get married, you have a protector when you get married? And like, it's like your, your daddy, you know, <laughs> make sure that they're doing the right thing. Nobody's messing around because you're fiduciaries when you're married, right? But you need a protector. You know, look what goes on, right? I mean, really, well, that's a great new other side we can some, start. Sometimes the protector doesn't want the marriage. Let's be careful about that. <laughs> so. But let's say they're in and we hire a protector and we call Mr. Protector. Uh, I think some shady business going on. Protector says has the right to go take a look. Make sure it's on the up and up before things get too out of hand. I think that's a great, a great cat of subcategory we can create. As a, as a fiduciary, <laughs> yes. As a family member, I'm I'm suspect yeah. uh, how that's going to go. I know we all well, well nobody's perfect, Richard. Right? Uh, that's what they it's say. Family is family. <laughs> family you know, is family. It is. It, it is. So anyway, yes. Let's get back into the issues and fiduciaries when it comes uh, to bankruptcy or family court matters and people getting divorced there's a lot of things that are involved you were together for years or maybe not too many years and things happen so let's talk a little bit about that and what people should look for well in the family law context uh, I act as a receiver which is the appointed uh, neutral agent of the court that has a fiduciary duty to the uh, the family uh, in litigation and to uh, the court uh, I don't deal much with creditors in the family law context, just the individuals. Uh, and the goal as receiver is to uh, protect the assets that are involved with the family. I do not get involved in, in custody, paternity, uh, or the marriage elements itself. Um, I don't hear the case for claims one to the other. I'm there only as a, the business coordinator, for instance, in family law support. Uh, there may be problems getting discovery from a uh, sole proprietor uh, spouse uh, as to how much money they're making, and he's declaring in the court he's not making anything, but he's got a uh, brand new Mercedes, he's got a 50-foot boat in the parking lot of the business, um, and uh, he seems to be out a lot, uh, and credit card debt that he's claiming on his uh, uh uh, declaration of expense. Uh, so if it's a lot of money involved uh, for support, it hasn't been paid, uh, pre-judgment, uh, the court may appoint me to come in, take a look at the records, uh, find out where the money's going, and to pay the support uh, in priority to the expenses being uh, uh, incurred by the other spouse, and to uh, uh, get the support program uh, back on track and to identify assets that should be the subject of the uh, court's review and judgment. Uh, we will go after uh, properties that have been transferred to relatives. It could be personal property, it could be business, the business title, uh, real property uh, to someone, third party who paid nothing for it, whether in California or out of California. And then I'm charged to uh, recover those assets and so that everybody's on the same asset playing field. Post-judgment, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'll go collect past due support, uh, equalization payments of businesses that have been uh, transferred from one spouse to the other based on the community property rules. Uh, and then uh, 
in my program, we, we try to stop bankruptcies of the entities, uh, try to make sure that the uh, assets are secured at the time of the judgment so that if a bankruptcy occurs, uh, the receiver has the right to go do certain things outside the bankruptcy court and uh, the spouse actually doesn't get to bankruptcy and the entity doesn't get to bankruptcy. Right. So it's, it's, it's very complicated, but that's what I've been doing over 40 years. Well, you so know what I call it growing it. up? Playing it fair and square. <laughs> that's what we said growing up. That you want to play fair and square because that's the best way to go because in life when you play it fair and square, it does – go the right way for you. You put it out to the universe, even though people will be panicked by certain things that they didn't do and have uh, some recovery to do. Um, and But if they follow through, people can rebuild themselves, people can start fresh and be done with the things that they should have been doing and everybody, no one's perfect, right? But if you, you know, have this issue and, you know, you need someone like Richard to help and to help with the attorneys, with the family attorneys, because, you know, we all specialize. You don't want a foot doctor operating on your hand, right? You just don't. And, you know, there's so many, and you may have a foot and hand problem, so you can need two specialists to come in and help with the situation so that it gets done efficiently, effectively, fairly, and you move on. That's the bottom, look at the bottom, the bottom of the barrel is not doing anything, but Gaining in the game is to move on and get things settled up and close the door and open up a new a new door, you know. And I know Richard is really good at it, and he gets the job done, you know. You know, you know, monkey around, right? That's, That's the what goal. they say. <laughs> you know, That's monkey true. Around. That's the goal. You know, so yeah. So how do people, you know, reach out to you? What's a good way for them to? maybe suggest that you work with their family attorneys if they feel that there are some roadblocks there and they're trying to accomplish a couple of things that's just not happening because of lack of knowledge or, you know. Well, you can, uh, for information purposes, the, anyone is welcome to call uh, my office and I'll chat with them about their situation. I will not represent them because I'm a neutral. Right. So I can tell them uh, a few things about what they can do to uh, gain a lawyer, uh, obtain a lawyer for what they need, or uh, enable them to discuss it with their lawyer who can call me and talk about it. And uh, I'm court appointed, so I only get involved in cases uh, actively when someone nominates me to the court in their papers uh, saying, I need a receiver because. Right. And, and then the judge says yes or no, but if he says yes, then, or she, uh, then I come into the program uh, under the court order that, uh, which is effectively the goal, the goal of the court of what, to be, what is to be done, what's the end game, that's all supposed to be in the order. I alert everybody to that problem. And, and, and interesting. And so my goal is to follow the instructions of the judge. I'm not uh, gonna be flip and operate outside the, the orders. Uh, if I feel that something could or should be done that's not in the order, I'll go back to court for instructions or a party can go back to court for instructions to enlarge my powers. Um, but a, a well-crafted order will have pretty much everything uh, I need uh, to take possession of assets, bank accounts, uh, various assets, precious uh, uh, gold, silver, gems, uh, the boats, the um, uh, businesses operation, mm -hmm. and uh, I do a lot of business operation in family law matters uh, due to the obst obstinacy and obstruction by the other spouse. And it doesn't have to be the husband who's obstructive. I've had right. a number of wives who have been obstructive and uh, we dealt with a, a char manufacturing company for 18 months. We've wow. had a uh, poultry, live poultry market, one of only three in the county uh, for 14 months wow. uh, operating while the uh, either probate or family law department were working out the uh, merits of the case between the parties. You know what's interesting? I don't think most people know that they have a right to go get a request a receiver because they're hitting block walls, right? They're kind of going round and round the circle and they don't know they can actually request a receiver in court to 
get all these things done properly? Well, not, not to disparage my colleagues, but I, uh, we're receivers in, in civil litigation, real estate litigation, family right, law, right. even in probate, um, are candidly uh, a bit of a last resort remedy because um, we charge for our time. Right, right. So, but the cooperation given to us by uh, the parties reduces the cost, and if one party is more uh, or is on the uh, fulcrum, uh, the, te the teeter-totter, and causing the obstruction, uh, then they could get charged with our, uh, my fees and, and that of my staff and uh, when everything's all said and done. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the basic issue with uh, my fellow lawyers is they don't look at receivers as an operating tool, a discovery tool, a uh, controlling tool, uh, but uh, some see the light, and uh, I do a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, and, and been doing a long time. That's yeah, all I do. Yeah, and you know, a family attorneys, uh, you know, that really want to get their job done and not go around in circles, you know, because that's ultimately what happens. Everybody tries to throw things under the rug, and then someone catches it out of the rug, and then you just go in these circles, and just it makes it such a long process. At some point, you know, when you know, in all fairness, the people may not be cooperating you know, and showing their finances and their books and their property values that they have in the business and the spouse may not have access to it um, because that's where you have to hope the person is being honest, right? So that's at some point, you know, either they get tired out and they don't want to pay anyone anymore and they just come forward or the other person gets tired out because they're so stressed they have nervous breakdown and that's usually the person taking care of the children and not being able to say, I'm just done with this, I'm signing off on something that could have been better, right? And so there, the, the reason, it, it, like I like bringing this up, to know that there are options, not to necessarily have to have you, but there are options out there. Nothing is a brick wall. There's always, and that's why I have my show. You know, I'm a neutral also. When people hire me and they're going through a divorce or they're going through a dissolution of a relationship, a business, I'm the middleman. I don't like either one better or worse. You know, I, you know, I, I'm the person who's there to get the deal done and make sure the property gets sold for the most money it can get sold for and be transparent. I am not here to take sides. You know, we're here to get the job done. I'm an assistant to getting the job done as Richard is too. And, and it's so important because we can't do all, all of this ourselves. And, you know, we have a lot of, you know, you have mixed marriages, right? That's another whole situation. Um, and people try to hide, you know, assets through giving it to a family member, you know. And, um, you know, it could be in probate. It could be anything. It could be holding things in hidden areas. Um, and, and, you know, transparency sometimes is, is difficult and you have to clean shop. You know, and what happens when you have a special needs trust? You know, those things are important. I know a lot of times there may not be a third party to help enforce that special needs trust, right? As a child who's going to become an adult child or is an adult child and needs someone to operate that special needs trust. Well, the uh, I have a special needs trust uh, for our family, and the uh, my wife and I are are controlling it uh, right. until we can't. Right, and, and at that point, um, we're going to, uh, we've kind of changed our, our MO on this, mm -hmm. and we're going to probably have a more uh, licensed fiduciary running the trust and a super protector, right. which will be uh, uh, one of my children and uh, or a friend as the protector. Uh, with lots of rights and opportunities right. to challenge the licensed fiduciary to do the work so that I'm not uh, imposing on uh, one of my uh, children or uh, uh, family members to have to deal with the financial aspects. Right, and some of them are hard decisions. Yes, you very know? hard. But it, the protector issue is becoming a, an interesting phenomenon, and I'm really only learning about it I love myself. the idea yeah, because well it's I, always better to have someone else looking over I, I have proposed to a number of estate planning lawyers that we uh, uh, I'm, I'm here to be a protector because I, I'm very empathetic given my own family situation. Uh, and I know 
I think what parents want and siblings want uh, for uh, family members. So um, I, I think the protector idea is uh, be going to become much more prominent uh, yeah, coming and years. and you, and you know, Richard comes from a place of empathy because his personal life has taken him into this situation, and he, he and his family have been just speak volume for someone who needs special needs trusts, um, and having a family member who needs one, um, it comes from a place of the heart, right? And that you want to talk to someone who has experienced it because their empathy is there. It's, it's wholeheartedly, it's not just a paper and a pencil and a person. It's someone who puts their heart and soul into it because of their own personal experience. And, um, you know, I thank you for being the type of people you are. And that's what, why I was drawn to you because you have, we all have stories, right? And, and when you have a story and you're authentic, it makes you so much better at what you do because it comes from a place of love and it comes to a place for having to do the right thing, you know, and maybe because I'm a Libra, I feel that way, but <laughs> you Libra too, Richard. <laughs> you know, I'm a Libra, you know, so I'm always on the scales. I'm always like, oh, I gotta go back this way. You know, I'm constantly fighting that, you know, I'm um, a little tipping on the wrong side. Let me go back in the middle. So, um, you know, I really feel that's important to have someone who comes from that place. And I have to take a break and you got a few more minutes with us and then we're going to have to leave. So whoever you want to listen to this last few minutes after we take a break, come back. When it comes to buying or selling your home, there's no room for error with your money. That's why Precision Escrow is the company you need to know. When selling your home, you want to make sure you're working with a company that has your best interest and keeps your money safe. That's why they use encrypted emails and secure trust accounting. Precision Escrow will follow the contract in detail from the beginning to the end and protect the parties involved. Working with Precision is like working with a huge family. Everyone is always smiling and cohesively working together for you. Check out their five-star Yelp and Google reviews and see how they separate themselves from the competition. Whether you use an agent or sell your home yourself, they'll give you 30% off your transaction, which saves you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Use code RADIO30 to take advantage of the savings. Call Lauren Fredette, your representative, for more details. She's available seven days a week during and after office hours. Call toll-free 877-393-4101. Let them help you through one of the most important decisions of your life. Felicia Gerardo Insurance Agency specializes in your small business, homeowners, auto, umbrella, and life insurance needs. Their personalized staff is passionate to help you save money while keeping all your valuable assets covered. During these times, many people are concerned about insurance and getting the best value for their dollar. Felicia Dorado's insurance agency understands this and approaches each situation uniquely. Felicia Dorado's insurance agency has friendly hometown customer service reps that are ready to help you today. 661-288-2001. La Rocca Inspections provides four of the most needed inspections when buying or selling real estate, and homeowners love their property reviews. Since 1994, they serve the greater Los Angeles area and its 100 plus communities. Schedule residential or commercial inspections for your comprehensive reports. Their inspections can save you money on repairs. Go to LaRoccaInspections.com and download the free guide to inspections. Call now for your free quote, 818-951-1795. Your. I love it. Right on. Your hometown station. And thank you for joining us. And we're going to be talking a few more minutes. And I wanted to wrap up with some interesting points because as people use Richard's services, Richard Weissman's services, um, he also uses other professionals. Richard, do you want to embellish a little bit about that? 
Yes. Well, since it's your show, Mina, I want to start with Aww. realtors. Um, <laughs> Wait, thank you. Because we, we uh, uh, professional fiduciary like myself does not uh, actually sell the property. Uh, we're talking homes. We're talking multi-residential uh, uh, buildings, commercial properties, raw land, uh, that whatever the assets are in, uh, in the estate, the family law issue or whatever. So we have to go to people who know what they're doing in that arena, and particularly real estate, uh, so that uh, we get uh, proper valuations. Uh, we know that somebody's going to be uh, promoting the listing. It's not just going to sit on the wall, as right. it were. Uh, getting out the marketing program uh, that I've approved and the court has uh, approved. And then uh, in, in probate and receiverships, you basically got a 90-day listing. So things have to happen. Quickly. Yes. So uh, we're looking for uh, no fire sales. We don't allow those. Nope. You don't allow those. No, nope. we don't allow them. Nope. Strict orders. And uh, we've got to come in with uh, market value, and we've got to be negotiating uh, not only price but terms to make sure that we're going to get uh, highest value in the shortest possible opportunity, usually for cash, of course. Yes. Uh, and then uh, having the asset uh, value realized uh, to cash so the court can make distributions accordingly. Uh, but I can tell you from my 40 plus years of experience as uh, dealing with receiverships and uh, fiduciary matters, uh, and you didn't know this, but my dad was a broker. Oh, I didn't know, you know what, yeah. I didn't know that, really. No, you did not know that. Aww. So uh, uh, I learned the program. Oh, funny, that's And great. Uh, my dad always said, uh, to a lawyer who usually said no, <laughs> uh, but I was a businessman uh, in conversion, and uh, Dad said, uh, always make the deal. And we today at lunch were talking about yeah. certain things that you're doing to make sure that the deal gets made, you yes. get your closure, uh, the parties are happy, buyer, seller, and and uh, everyone else. So it's, it's really important that the fiduciary uh, get strong uh, professionals outside. I mean, sometimes we're looking at accountants. Sometimes we're looking at different lawyers for litigation to help the estate or uh, the trust estate. But I can tell you that the, the biggest area of my concern over 40 years has always been the professional broker. Mm -hmm. And you, you meet that, uh, the, the criteria. Thank you. And uh, I'm nice, Matt. You can have a good time, but I run a tight ship. Well, right. you got <laughs> to run that tight ship because that's what the court's looking for. Yes. That's what the fiduciary is yes. looking yes. for. Uh, get the job done in, in the parameters that uh, are set out for you and, uh, and timely. Well, thank you, Richard. I'm flattered. Okay. Coming from uh, someone I'm, like you. That's, that's where we are. Uh, but I, the, the fiduciary should always be using uh, highly professional people uh, because if you don't, then everything comes up short, and there are more problems created than uh, should have been. Yes, agreed. I've seen a lot of things as well. And I know there's a very other, another, a couple of other important issues that people face is um, child support. Yeah, we, um, I'm going to be acting as a fiduciary for a child support trust. Uh, I have never encountered this, and uh, I'm not a family law lawyer, but in all my receiverships, um, I've never encountered this, and the so that there was, we have a non-resident U.S. resident in the U.K. who's selling a piece of property. He's going to have the cash to pay the support over the next almost five years. Uh, and when I was called by the family law lawyer about it, they wanted a guardian or this or that. But the guardianships are a problem uh, because they can be changed pretty quickly. The, little independence if it's the parent, and ex-spouse doesn't want to give ex-spouse control over the money in lump sum to make sure that the child has the support mm -hmm. over the long term. Uh, and I actually came up with the idea, as far as I know, uh, and said, let's do a, a trust. I'll be the trustee. Uh, they'll fund it. We'll know exactly how much support goes out every month. Uh, there's a modest fee for bookkeeping uh, potentially for tax returns if there's enough uh, interest income from it. Uh, but the administration is very, very tight. Uh, single goal, pay the support Love it. over five years. So Love it. That's something new uh, that can be funded by sales of property. That, or that is wonderful because I've often seen people stop paying. 
and you can't go after something that's not there. So if you have a trust and money set aside, that's so important. And another thing, big thing, conflict in a trust or probate. That is huge. Very big. Uh, either contesting wills or um, people who uh, you have administrators or executors who are uh, trying to get the business that was taken by the 30-year bookkeeper or manager uh, who claims it's their business now, <laughs> it was signed over by the decedent, and the big fight. Uh, in that type of case, I would become a receiver uh, to take possession of and commit discovery on the, on the business and try to determine a legal audit, where the, where's the paperwork that shows that that manager's got it or not, and uh, those, those kinds of issues. And, and that these are so important. This is everyday life, guys. Whoever's listening, this is everyday life, and I'm sure you know someone who will or have been or going through right now things of this nature because it is part of life. Death and taxes are part of life, and so are these things. So um, even if it's a simple will, you just don't know. And um, again, Richard will have be able to comment on Facebook or his assistant uh, to reach out to him on Facebook because you can access Facebook anytime you want on KHTS. And those of you driving, please don't access Facebook right now because then you'll need a personal injury lawyer. Um, that's not a good idea. <laughs> he does have referrals to other professionals, but we don't want to do that. So do this at any time, and you can always reach out to me at 310-345-8500. I can give you Richard's direct information. Again, 310-345-8500 as you see it streaming right now. I wish everyone... LaRaga Inspections provides four of the most needed inspections.